Hello. How are you? How are you? Uh, it, it's let's just say life never unfolds as you imagine it. Um, not at all. I mean, I'm 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 pretty sure this is not how you imagine your first week in Congress to start. Uh, but I'm you know I'm just so happy that you're okay and that you're here with us to you. talk. Uh, you know, I you know I, I very much appreciate. It. I'm so happy for this historic moment that you are even part of Congress. Uh, you know, as a Latino myself, I'm just I, I'm just in awe of you. So thank you so much for being on Lobo Live today. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to ask you, you were there yesterday on Capitol Hill. Could you set the picture for us here on Lobo Live? Just let us know what what was going on, what happened and how you were feeling. Yeah, so as you know, I'm a newly sworn in member. I, I officially took office on on Sunday. And I never thought as a newly sworn in member that I would live through a violent assault on the US Capitol. So on Wednesday, there was a joint session of Congress, both the House and the Senate, serving as a venue for the Electoral College vote count. And I was in my office when all of a sudden the US uh, Capitol Police stormed into my office, directing my staff and me to immediately evacuate because there were reports of a suspicious package. Um, and in the hours since then, there had been protesters who breached the Capitol, who stormed into the Senate chamber, into the Speaker's office. Uh, the House floor had to be evacuated. The presidential vote count had been delayed. And members like me were brought into a safe room where we stood for several hours until the Capitol Police took control of the situation so the Capitol was a scene of panic and confusion and chaos. And, you know, the electoral vote count, which happens every four years, which is normally a half an hour ceremonial event, mm. descended into a 14 hour assault on our democracy. Yeah. Um, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen in my life. And uh, it was certainly not the first week that I had envisioned or planned for as a new member of Congress. And, I thank God that my colleagues and I are okay. Yeah, we're, we're very happy that you're okay. We're very happy that you're there. And we're very happy that you got back to work immediately. We saw, I was, I was watching the news till the wee hours of the morning here on the West Coast. So I know that y'all were tired over there. Um, so we're very happy that, that you're okay. Um, I wanted to ask you, because there was a lot of talk yesterday about, uh, you know, words mean things. And yeah. when we call, um, things like that happened yesterday, protests versus what they are, which is domestic terrorism. Yes. Um, we, we get a lot of misinformation about what's going on. So what can you say from a personal standpoint of being there? How is this different than, let's say, a protest that would have would have happened, you know, any other day? Well, yesterday was the final vote count for the presidential election, which is the highest yeah. office in, in America. I mean, yeah. that is, that vote count represents our democracy in action. It represents the peaceful transfer of power. And never in the history of our country has, has a sitting president attempted to instigate mm. a violent mob to storm into the Capitol in the hopes of derailing what should have been a peaceful transfer of power. So you know, yeah. we are in dangerously uncharted territory. There have only been two... Um, circumstances in which the United States, the, the U.S. Capitol was under attack. One was yesterday, the other was the War of 1812, Correct. when the British invaded and yeah. set the Capitol on fire. Uh, yeah. So Donald Trump represents just a uniquely destructive, dangerous presidency in, in the history of our country. Yeah. I wanted to read you a tweet um, from Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut. Um, this one says, one of the key questions from yesterday is why it took hours for there to be a response from the U.S. military to an armed invasion of the U.S. Capitol. Why spend $700 billion on military if they can't defend the Capitol from attack? Now, this is something that has been very big, not only on social media, but in the news. It's like we saw that uh, the difference, the disparity in how the, the reactions of law enforcement um, this summer versus what happened yesterday. We had, uh, you know, security taking pictures with these insurrectionists, whereas, uh, you know, people were getting pepper sprayed and gas in the street, not even close to Capitol Hill. So 
this this leads me to a conversation that's been that's bits bits going on you know that it's uh, you know a lot of people have been saying this is why we wanted to fund the police because the funds aren't being used to actually protect the people um so can you can you speak to anything that um senator murphy has has said in this tweet as well look you're exactly right there's a double standard that reflects structural racism in our society i'm a new yorker and during the protests following the murder of George Floyd, the New York City Police Department arrested more than 2,000 people, largely mm. peaceful protesters, many of them of color. Yesterday, you had largely white, actually almost exclusively white insurrectionists storming into the US Capitol uh, and invading the chamber and the office of the speaker, and only 15 arrests were made. So there's clearly a double standard that comes at the expense of, of people of color in our society. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's incredible to me as just watching, you know, the, the glee in the eyes of these people that are in the Senate chamber just taking selfies and doing videos while this summer we were in the street crying because of the death of, you know, black folks. And this is, this is a, a, a pony show to them when they're, you know, they're, they have guns at the Capitol, you know, and the police and the people that are put in charge to take control of this do not. So um, is there anything you can say as a congressman uh, going forward on how, you know, an investigation into what happened yesterday, you know, because it's not like they didn't know this was going to happen. The, we've, we've been hearing about January 6th for quite a while now. Um, you know, the president has invoked all of these, you know, these scare tactics, um, and it actually happened. So is there any investigations going on that you know of or anything that you can provide that you think would help us move past this? I know there are going to be several congressional investigations, but I agree with you. There needs to be a full investigation into the security failures surrounding the assaults on the Capitol. Yeah. You know, how can as, a violent mob... Yeah, and as a person that was there, you know, because I, I did read a lot of people on Twitter, and I actually thought to myself, wow, that's so true. You know, I know uh, politics is very different than, you know, everyday people, but when I feel like I'm being attacked and my life is at risk, there's this idea, we heard a lot of, you know, the senators and folks talking last night, we need to move past this. How can we move past this, not even 24 hours before your lives were, you know, before it was very unsafe to be in your position. Um, do you think it's just some language that they're using to try and minimize what happened? Or do you think they really just want to turn the page on it? We cannot move on as if nothing happened. Like something like this has never transpired before. We have to hold Donald Trump accountable. Right? He spent months delegitimizing our elections. He spent, look, if you were an elected official, and you're telling your supporters that the election is stolen and mm. the system is rigged against you, how do you expect those supporters to react? What do you expect will happen? Yeah. So he knew exactly what he was doing in instigating a violent mob against the United States Congress on the same day as the presidential vote count. And then Donald Trump stood by passively while the U.S. Capitol was under fire. It took the intervention of the vice president to order the mobilization of the National Guard. So even as a member of Congress, I feel less safe than I did before, right? right? If, well, if, if, if white insurrectionists can invade the office of the speaker, mm. uh, then I, I feel exposed as even as a member of Congress. Right, yeah, I, and it's funny because it does, it sends a, a larger message to the world that this, that we don't have it together. And that is something that the United States is always so proud of is having it together. So that being said, where do we go from here? Um, you know, Speaker Pelosi came out very, very forcefully today saying that she would be 100% behind invoking the 25th Amendment against the president. Um, there's been talks of, you know, they don't know if they're going to do it. They don't know if it's going to work. I wanted to ask you as a congressman, are you willing and able to vote for impeachment if it comes to that for uh, the president? There's no question that I will support the impeachment of Donald Trump. If, inst if instigating a violent mob against the United States Congress, if that is not an impeachable offense, uh, then I don't know what would be. 
Uh, the, the best option is invoking the 25th Amendment. It's for the Vice President and a majority of the Executive Cabinet Secretaries to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove the President from office. Uh, but if the Vice President fails to do so, then Congress should definitely proceed with impeachment. Um, he, is no, he, he was never fit to, to run this country, mm. but he has become more unstable than ever before. He is a clear and present threat to the security of our nation, to the security of our capital, and he has to be removed from public office immediately. Absolutely. And I would proudly, that's the easiest vote that I could ever cast. Thank you. We, well, we appreciate it. And honestly, I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy that you're okay. We need you there. We're so happy that you were voted in. We are, we are so happy to have you as part of the queer family representing us, um, not only as a queer person, but as, you know, an Afro-Latino. That is super important. We need your voice. So thank you so much for speaking with us today and taking the time yes. out of your schedule. I'm sure it's been a whirlwind, but it will get better. And I hope to speak to you at, at better times where we're celebrating, you know, some landmark legislation. So thank you so much for joining us, Congressman. Thank you for having me. Take care.